How's it going guys? It's Cole from See Through Panel showing off my haul from February 2024. It is not the largest haul I've ever had, but it has some pretty good books in it. I'm excited to show you guys. As always, the point of these videos are not to spoil anything. I just want to talk about why I bought the book, um, what interested me, and show off the art and talk about what little I probably know about the story. First off, we've got the Meta Baron's Second Cycle Finale hardcover. Uh, by Humanoids, retailing for $25 US, and written by Alejandro Jodorowsky, Jerry Frisian, and drawn by Pete Woods. I know nothing about this other than the fact that it concludes the story that I recently read of the Meta Baron's second cycle. I think Pete Woods is an interesting choice um, for this story, considering the art from the uh, previous hardcover was a lot different than what I expect from his style. And already I'm seeing a style that I've yet to see from Pete Woods. It's a lot more detailed. I haven't even opened this book um, before. This is already much more in line than for uh, the Meta Barons than I expected it to be. I thought it would be a big departure for the art in the series. But this seems to be mostly, I think, based on the coloring from what I've seen from Pete Woods. This is a lot different and makes it fit a lot closer to the kind of European influence sci-fi that I expect from the Meta Barons. Obviously, it's not full painted or anything like that, but the art does seem to be a lot nearer to that style than I thought. And already I can tell that it's going to get ridiculous. There's going to be a lot of sex and violence and really heady concepts and sci-fi jargon, as you would expect from the Meta Barons. So this is the second cycle finale. I don't know if that means that it's priming up for a third cycle, or if this is the end of the Meta Barons, the very final conclusion, I'm not sure. It does seem, from the at least from the previous hardcover, that things are wrapping up in totality. This would be the very end, but I couldn't say. I really couldn't say. But before you read this, definitely get the hardcover, either from the, the one I recently reviewed, or they've reprinted a new version that includes this finale, which is probably what I would go with, just the all-in-one. Uh, it already is bothering me that I have two hardcovers for this big story, but, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Up next, let's do Vinland Saga Deluxe Edition Book 1, published by Kodansha in this gigantic faux leather, um, maybe not even faux leather, like Dark Horse is doing the faux leather. They're doing a nice hardcover treatment, uh, but it is not the same. $55 US, close to the Dark Horse editions. I think those are 50 um, I'm unfamiliar with this story other than I know it's a uh, seinen and it's really, really well regarded. Uh, a Viking story that at times takes fantastical departures but usually tries to keep it pretty close to home and pretty historical in the realm of historical fiction. Um, oh, I should say, written and drawn by Makoto Yukimura. Hopefully I said that right. Um, I don't know anything about this. I watched the first episode of the anime and then thought, why, why am I doing this? I could just read the book, which is how I prefer to consume um, my stories. And well, I've yet to crack this as well. Pretty much all of these books I've yet to open. I really should do the... Uh, let's go easy on the spine here and do the old classic flip method. You can see some of the art on the side. Sorry. Not the best way to show off the art, but... I don't want to crack the spine early or anything, and this is maybe not a real way to do it, but it's how I've always done it. Um, yeah, I don't know anything about this. It is an epic. It goes for a very large amount of chapters. It's going to wrap up soon, from what I heard, or maybe it already did. I can't really remember, because I've yet to start the series. Um, but I just know it's one of the classic epic seinen in the manga world, and it is um, kind of like Norse historical fiction. Uh, that's pretty much what draws me to it. It sounds awesome. The battles look huge and epic. The fighting looks awesome. Um, and from what I've seen, it's got like Game of Thrones-esque drama where we see a really long-term progression of characters, which I'm always interested in. I always love to be attached to these characters that you slowly build up um, affection for and see them grow and evolve and maybe even devolve and all that. So it does seem to be just like a sprawling epic, and I'm excited for that. Witch Hat Atelier Kitchen, Volume 2 by Hiromi Sato, created by Kamome Shirahama. Another Kadansha book. This one retailing for $13.99. I like their little setup they do back here, because it's always easy to tell where 
the information is going to be. Um, I've been reading Witch Hat Atelier for a while. I don't really cover it in the videos because, like, manga takes forever, and I could either cover the first two volumes and then... Or I could read the entirety of it and come back and talk about it after. It's hard to decide, and I don't really want to just do every single volume as an individual video because there's not a lot to gain as a viewer. Um, but this is just in that world. Little side stories revolving around cooking and just kind of using the magic system that's in that world. Really wholesome stuff, and I think the art matches pretty closely. Uh, obviously, it's not the same. I do obviously prefer... Well, not obviously. I do prefer the original series art by Shirahama, but this is just like a really fun um, little side story in this world. At least the first volume was. And I can't imagine this is much of a of a departure from that. Not a lot to say on that one. Uh, really excited to have it on the shelf. I just need to get more Witch Hat Atelier under my belt and then cover it at some point. Next up we have a book from a studio I am not aware of, a publisher I don't know about. Mad Cave. It's called Crusader. Trade paperback. I think it's four issues. Um, $18 US, so not the cheapest trade. Um, I don't know a lot about this. Matt Emmons writes, draws, and colors. Andre Lucan does letters. From what I can tell, a um, crusader, like from a historical standpoint, like a Templar, is transported to a fantasy world and kind of has to find a way to escape or to survive, or maybe there's some other plot thread I'm not aware of, but has a goblin as a companion, I won't say friend, um, and just fantasy romp ensues with a kind of out-of-this-world, a character who's been placed in this world, isekai style. And I've been just drawn by the really gritty art. Uh, it's not a style I'm really used to reading, or one that I normally would say I even really enjoy. I mean, I do enjoy it, but it's not high on my list. But I think it lends itself well to a, like, pulpier, more simplistic in terms of storytelling kind of narrative. And I think that's what this appears appears to be. It doesn't seem like it's going to have a ton of deep plot threads and super long characters. It's not Vinland Saga. I'm going based off guessing here. But um, I think it's more of a simple in-and-out story, more about the feeling, the emotion, and the raw storytelling than the long-term plots and character arcs and things like that. I could be wrong. Maybe there's a volume two. Maybe it's going to be an epic. I don't know. But from what I can gather, um, it's just an in-and-out little adventure story, which I am definitely game for. The Lonesome Hunter's Wolf Child, written and drawn by Tyler Crook, published by Dark Horse, trade paperback. This is $20 US. And if it's like the last story, it's a four-issue miniseries. Um, it's how he seems to be doing these kind of episodic entries into the Lonesome Hunters world. Uh, I really enjoyed the last book. I covered it on the channel. You should check it out if you haven't read it. I would um, really recommend it. I think it had some problems considering Tyler Crook was an artist first, and now that he's kind of delving into writing, I think it had some hiccups. But on the whole, I think it's a very fun and enjoyable story that has a lot of unique uh, flavor to it in terms of like the modern fantasy genre. The art is ridiculous. I think Tyler Crook is one in a million. His art is so unique and very telling that it's him. I mean, you look at a Tyler Crook, not even a page, a panel of his art, and you know it's him. He works traditionally, from what I can tell. Um, this is all pen to paper, watercolor, stuff like that. I'm not an artist. Um, but ink on paper. Uh, and I'm really excited to see the adventure these characters go on. I might have to revisit a few things because stories leave my head so quickly. I read so many of them and I consume a lot of media. Um, but I do, I'm sure it'll come, come all right back to my brain and I'll just really start enjoying this world once again. The Wolf Child has an interesting design that is really cool. I love the mask. The covers are just gorgeous. Every Tyler Crook cover is an absolute work of art. Uh, I'm just really excited. This. This guy was a big, like, lingering plot thread in the last uh, chapter of this, so I'm excited to see where that goes. But would very much recommend it if you're into, like, modern fantasy or you just love beautiful art. Finally, the last book. I've only got, like, seven books? Uh, six books. Avengers Mythos, the uh, 
writer and artist list is too long to describe. Published by Marvel, obviously. $25 US. This is an old book, not recent. The rest of this stuff I bought on pre-order. This one I just saw um, Paolo Rivera's art for the first two stories and was like, I'm getting that. I'm not going to lie, I kind of fell for something I haven't fallen for for a long time. When I first got into comics, I would buy books based on either cover art or um, maybe issue one or two were drawn by this amazing, beautifully, highly detailed artist. And then the issue two it just was more traditional comic art. Kind of what I fell for here. I I didn't think Paolo Rivera drew every story, but I thought he drew more of them. It's just the first two, from what I can tell. But it is worth it, I think, um, for a place on my shelf. Obviously, I'll read it and find out. Sometimes in books like these, I end up saying, I don't know if this justifies a place on my shelf, but I got it for cheap. Um, I don't know if they'll reprint something like this. I'm not sure, but it's just retelling origin stories of classic Marvel characters. Captain America and the Hulk are the two that are drawn by Paolo Rivera. Let me get you some more. Paul Jenkins writes for Rivera. Then you've got uh, Roberto Aguirre Sacasa, Stephanie Hans on art. Love her. Kyle Higgins and Alex Siegel. Great. Uh, don't know Stefan. I don't know this name. Dalibor Telagic. I know a lot. He's great. Um, no one else. Sean McKeever. I actually do know. Um, there's an Eminem right there. Catherine Eminem. Everyone else. I just. I'm not sure. So I really couldn't tell you. It's just the origins of Marvel characters retold um, in a kind of modern way. And I'm really here for Paolo Rivera. I mean, this art is absolutely gorgeous. He does a great, great job. A style more cohesive um, to kind of an evergreen thing. Um, not that it's com comparable to Alex Ross. <clears throat> Pardon me. Not that it's comparable to Alex Ross, but... Um, this style, this like more realistic painterly style, I think is more uh, viable for an evergreen book. I think rather than using traditional comic art, it's more interesting and more has more longevity to it to use art like this. So it makes sense when they were going for a, a book to last the ages, which I don't know that this did because there's never any talk of it. Um, it makes sense that this is the art they went with. Here's the Hulk story. Uh, but yeah, I really hope that the other stories blow me away. Because, uh, see, here's Stephanie Hans. I can tell immediately. Uh, the Artist on Die with Kieran Gillen, if you've read that book. I think this is a much earlier Hans art. Um, so I'm excited for that, but other than that, I don't really know many of the artists besides Talajic. Um, I'm really hoping they blow me away so this justifies this place on my shelf, but I can never be sure. Sometimes uh, superhero cape books just don't do it for me, but we'll find out. Either way, um, this art is at least worth reading. I'm really excited to read that story specifically. So, that is all the books. I had six books uh, this month. It was, a, it was a smaller haul. They really have been... Um, the people I pre-order from uh, have been getting slow on me, and so it takes a long time to get my books. I'm not sure what that's about, but at least I get them. You know, I get them for cheap. And I get them eventually. So that's my endorsement of a company I'm not going to name. But um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching. I'm trudging through... I shouldn't say that. I'm thoroughly enjoying Hell's Paradise, but it is a longer series for me. And my reading has been slowed down a bit by life. But I haven't been covering too many books. Uh, I plan on getting a few more videos out there. Doing a final video on Hell's Paradise and then maybe something in between this and that. We'll see. Either way, thanks for watching, guys. Peace.